What's up YouTube? Um, so I just wanted to share today how to convert your plumbing system from polybutylene piping, short for poly, um, into PEX piping. And right now I'm under the sink inside of my RV. Um, I had a leaking T-connection uh, that um, I noticed it was leaking because one day I saw a big puddle outside under my RV and it leaked right here all the way from here down through the insulation. This is the wheel well. Uh, so it leaked right through the insulation and it made a big, big puddle outside. Um, so I don't know if you guys know, but um, polybutylene piping, which is the gray piping, it's pretty easy to identify. It was uh, manufactured in the mid 80s to the late 90s and it was discontinued because there was too many lawsuits of the uh, couplings leaking uh, because it negatively reacts to the chlorine in the water. So um, it was discontinued for that reason and I figured since there was lawsuits in like the 90s and early 2000s that means those piping connections started leaking only after like 10, 15, 20 years and my RV is 25 years old so I figured instead of just changing that one bad connector I would uh, change as many as I can while I'm down here under the sink uh, so I did a total of 12 uh, connectors um, and uh, 24 clamps and I used uh, the cinch clamps I prefer the cinch tool versus the uh, where is that um, I prefer that over the clamp tool uh, because the cinch tool has a removal function where you can cut off the clamps pretty easily. Um, and the tool is cheaper in general versus the clamp tool which uses these kind of rings. Um, and it doesn't even come with a removal tool usually. So this is a two-in-one tool. I got it for around 40 bucks on Amazon. It came with a bunch of cinch clamps. Uh, half inch and three quarter inch. Um, this is half inch piping, so I didn't need the three quarter inch clamps. Um, <clears throat> so when you convert your, uh, if you want to convert your plumbing system, remember uh, they used polybutylene piping in uh, RVs and uh, travel trailers and regular residential homes. Um, so if you want to convert it, you're going to need to get, uh, where is it? Oh, hold on a second. Ah, I just had it. Oh, here it is. So uh, you're going to need to get something called a polybutylene adapter. Uh, the copper ring, if you're going to use the crimp tool instead of the cinch tool, you can use these rings. The copper ring goes on the uh, poly side, which um, you're going to fit in the, the threads that are closer together. That's going to go on the poly side. The wider uh, space threads are going to go on the PEX side. So the black ring is going to go on the PEX side, the poly, uh, the, the copper ring is going to go on the poly side. Um, if you're in a really tight spot and you, do, you don't want to worry about uh, getting in a painful contortionist position, um, you could get a shark bite adapter. I actually have it, but I'm going to return it because I was able to... Uh, I was able to get in there and fit it, but this is it. Shark bite adapter. Um, I believe the gray side goes on the poly side and uh, this white side goes to the PEX side. Um, it's a really easy push and fit connector. 
but uh, we're talking about um, a five times more expensive coupling. This is around ten dollars. This is only a couple dollars. So uh, it's your choice, um, depending on your situation and the location you're in. Um, I didn't mind spending the extra money, but I just bought it in case I wasn't going to be able to cinch these clamps down in this tight location. Uh, one method I did use um, to cinch it in this tight location, because uh, one thing I don't like about this uh, cinch tool, it's called eye crimp. I don't know if all of them are like that, but this it's a pretty big tool and you can get a mini version if you're in a tight quarter but you still need to put a lot of uh a lot of muscle into clamping it down um so it's very 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 hard if you're on the floor under a sink to be able to use two hands to crimp it down so what i did is i got a piece of wood and uh, <clears throat> I would fit it on here and then use the wood as a holding platform for the other lever and I would just go like that. So um, it took a while still, but it definitely did the job. And another note, be careful when you put these clamps on. You want them to go on as straight and evenly around as you can. It's very it can be easy for it to move when you fit the tool, especially if you're in a tight location and you can't really see it well. Um, you could try to put some like duct tape on it so it doesn't move. Um, or you can try to clamp it down with, uh, with some plier handles. But I didn't want to risk like deforming the clamp and... Uh, it not making a good circular clamp all the way around so um let me show you real quick uh this is for the hot water side i built this uh outside i did all of my almost all of the clamps as many as i can while i'm outside um and then this is the long pipe uh that's going to go up to the sink uh, I, I even changed this adapter. See, I clamped that, and uh, this is going to go right up to the sink. Um, this this I got this for like six bucks online, but they actually sell it at Home Depot for around two bucks. So, if you want to save some money, do that. And uh, here's the old one. Um, here is the T connection right there you could see how it's tarnished so that's where it was leaking probably on this top part right here um, this project is definitely harder than I thought so far I've been I've spent how long um, 12 hours and I probably got like maybe one more hour to go or two more hours to go because I want to um, do everything perfectly right, you know, so I don't need to deal with any leaks or bad crimps. Uh, one, one thing that made this job hard is because you can't just measure these pipes it, and then put the same length pipes. Sometimes it works, but in this case it didn't because um, this long pipe that goes up to the sink it's a lot more flexible than the PEX pipe the PEX pipe is a lot more stiff so I had to shorten um, like I had to shorten this end so that it can fit and uh, over here I had to drill another hole over here to fit this one in so that over here it can lay flat and uh, not bend any like the pipes won't be like bent up a little so um, 
that's what I had to do. And let's see what else, what else? Mm. Let me think, any other tips? Uh, I, I did, um, I'm gonna change this insulation because it's pretty old and wet. And um, if the pipes don't lay completely flat, I, I could put like a little cushion, like a thinner one than this, underneath, and then just clamp it down with, uh, where is it? Hold on a second. Um, I got this big pack <clears throat> from Home Depot. Uh, these pipe clamps that I'm gonna just drill into the floor. So, um, so yeah, this was actually like the thin cushion I was talking about. I can put that under the pipe, and it can absorb the vibration when you're driving, so prevent leaks. Um, after I finish everything, I'll probably put like uh, either some cardboard or a paper towel um, underneath um, all the new connectors. And then uh, fill it up with water, fill up the RV with water, cross my fingers, turn the sink on, and hope there's no leaks. And I can easily spot the leak if there's like paper towel or cardboard underneath uh, the connectors. So uh, wish me good luck on the rest of this project. Uh, leave me a comment or a like. Um, or any questions you guys have, I'll be glad to try to help you guys out. And uh, good luck to you guys. Uh, and one more thing, if you do embark on this big project, you will definitely save at least a grand. Because, um, yeah, plumbing work is not cheap. So if you're a DIYer, I would... Uh, I would do this project and uh, look up some other YouTube videos, which I did. Um, thanks to those people out there, it gave me the courage to do something like this. So, have a nice day, guys, and good luck. Bye.